In today's video, we're back with some updated NHL trade rumors, and we're focusing on a couple of teams who are at a spot where they pretty much have to make some roster moves. We're looking at the Montreal Canadiens and the New York Rangers, and that's coming up next. Well, welcome back here to Top Shelf Hockey. Now, as we've seen here in the past couple days, both of the teams we're discussing today have, hey, have made some signings that have kind of put them out of a spot where they probably do have other roster moves now that are going to follow. So we we'll want to take a look at what is most likely going to happen, especially based off a lot of the other trade rumors we've seen about these teams over the past few weeks during this offseason. Now, starting here with the Montreal Canadiens, we've recently seen them sign forward Charles Houdon to a one-year $800,000 contract. Now, given the current situation here for the Montreal Canadiens, and I'll show you their salary cap situation here courtesy of capfriendly.com, they have just over $4 million in space. And as you're also going to see here, they have 15 forwards under contract right now and the only one that's waivers exempt that they could send down to the minors without risking losing them would be just barry cock and niemi now i don't expect him to go to the minors he had a pretty decent rookie season last year so i don't expect that at all i mean i guess it is remotely possible strictly based on a numbers type of game we've seen some forwards before have to go to the minors uh, just based on that because they couldn't be risk losing other guys but i really don't think that's a move that montreal would want to do here now if you take a look at the 15 forwards they have under contract uh, there's obviously a bunch of them that you know that they would prefer not to move we've seen them make some other moves here already this offseason and make some adjustments to their lineup given the situation with goaltending and the defense i would imagine that they would probably still like to upgrade a left side defense when we had seen them sign uh, defenseman ben Sherrod, who certainly will help that blue line uh, they're probably hopeful that youngster victor mente might take another step here in his development as well and of course there's also been times where brett kulak actually didn't look too bad uh playing in a top four i'm just not sure he can play in that role consistently all season long so there's still been some talk that montreal might want to go after a bigger name left shot defenseman and there's really only one on the ufa market being jake gardner and there have been some links before that they have apparently had shown interest and where he hasn't signed yet they very well could try to move some stuff around to try to make that happen now on the defense though of course the one problem that they do have is the contract of carl alsner which i'm sure they'd love to be able to move and many though have felt that it might be unmovable but based on what we've seen here over the last little while with guys like lucic and neil being traded i wouldn't say that anything is impossible but given the fact that he's played a lot in the minors and where things are at i do think it would be more challenging than some other contracts that are not favorable for other clubs. But getting back to the forward group here with 15 guys under contract, personally, I was surprised that Houdon got a deal done. I thought they might go to the route of him not qualifying him, letting go as a UFA, and seeing if another team would sign him. Even within the 15 forwards that are under NHL contract, there's still some other young guys knocking at the door here that aren't even on that list right now that it could be uh, sent down to the minors as well. Uh, so they're going to want to make spots to have some of these young guys at least get uh, you know some NHL games and possibly start the year on the roster as well. There was some talk before about uh, moving Jonathan Drouin. Could they revisit that possibility? I know they haven't been overly thrilled with the, how things have gone so far with him in Montreal, but at the same time, with they've, based on what they've given up here to obtain him, could they get at least that good of a return coming back? It's probably doubtful. I mean, could they possibly move a guy like Matthew Pekka, who was signed last year? Uh, you know, only played 39 games last year, so he's certainly not a core member of this team. Uh, they acquired Nate Thompson and extended him for one year, one million, as a veteran fourth line center uh, you know he could certainly be ex expendable i think there'll be other teams out there that might take that on where it's only a one-year expiring contract as well uh and of course there's hudal himself just because he was signed to a contract it doesn't mean he, he couldn't be traded that's certainly still a possibility here so what do the Montreal Canadiens do with this roster? Give me your thoughts and your opinions. Like I said, there's been lots of rumors about what they're going to do, but mainly it's been more what they're going to acquire, not necessarily what they're going to give up. There's also been an update here on longtime former Montreal Canadian Andre Markov, who's been playing over in the KHL, uh, who wants to return. Apparently he was seeking two and a half million dollar US salary in the KHL, which is why he's leaving over there to try to come back to the NHL. And apparently I would assume he'd want the same type of money from an NHL club. There is some talk as well that he's met with several NHL teams, including Montreal, but we don't have any further updates on how the talks went or if there is any kind of mutual interest on either side uh, to kind of bring him back into the fold. If they did, I really don't know that they'd want to bring him back on a contract. I would think more than likely that if they did bring him back or any team, I think it's probably going to be a professional tryout myself. I mean, he's got a great history in the NHL, but he's certainly up there in age, uh, had slow down quite a bit and I would think that you know there's a possibility he could be 
uh, you know, used in a small capacity, but I'm not sure that he can play to the level he did before. So bringing him in on a professional tryout, uh, seeing how training camp goes, uh, seeing how some preseason action goes, might go a long way to helping that happen. But I guess we'll see if there's more interest than just the, the conversations that have gone on here in the past already. Let me know down in the comments what roster moves do the Montreal Canadiens need to make here. If they're going to make a serious push to upgrade that left side defense, obviously they're going to need more than just a $4 million cap space. Uh, and obviously, like I said, they also have too many forwards on the roster to make room to make sure some of these younger players have a chance to play and really to have an opportunity to make an impact here. So who in the forward group would you move? And what moves do you think GM Mark Bergevin is going to make here throughout the rest of this offseason to get ready for the upcoming year? Now, next up, I want to take a look at the New York Rangers. Of course, we saw big news out of New York yesterday that they signed Jacob Truba to an $8 million deal for seven years, a $56 million front-loaded contract for the 25-year-old RFA defenseman who actually avoids arbitration and signs a long-term contract, which we weren't really sure that was going to happen. There was a lot of talk that contract negotiations weren't going the best and that they might end up in arbitration. But obviously, the Rangers gave up you know, a decent amount to obtain him from Winnipeg and they certainly would not want to go to arbitration. If they ended up with a one-year deal, they'd be walking him right to unrestricted free agency and could possibly risk losing him for nothing. So it's nice to see Truba actually get a deal done. And personally, I can't help but wonder if the Rangers might have overpaid here a little bit, but that seems to be how things often go nowadays. I thought he'd be closer to a $7 million defenseman, not eight, but I guess they're uh, gonna continue here paying him for future projections. And hopefully that all works out. But regardless of what your thoughts are on the contract for Truba, they're now over the cap limit and they still have more players to sign. They still have Pavel Buznevich and Brendan Lemieux and Tony D'Angelo as well, not under contract. So let's take a quick look here at the Rangers cap situation from Cap Friendly. So as you can see here, it shows that there's absolutely no cap space. They are over here by a little bit. However, that's fine for right now because they can be over by 10% during the off season, but obviously they can't wait too long here to make some additional moves. Now, when you factor in those other contracts, they're not going to be big deals by any means. The players that are left unsigned are, are not in kind of predicaments here where they can demand a lot of money. You know, assuming that D'Angelo and Lemieux maybe get somewhere around a million dollars, for example, which damage probably gets a little more. And still, they're already over now. They're going to go over by that much more. They, they may end up over, you know, four or five million dollars or, you know, whatever, over the salary cap once all these players get signed. So they're going to need something significant to head out. Now, we talked before about some players who were mentioned in trade rumors uh, that could very well be the prime candidates to leave here. And they also have to look at the fact that they have some guys on expiring contracts. So obviously, there's question marks whether or not they're going to be retained with the club here longer term. On expiring contracts, you've got Kreider, you've got Fast, you've got Nemestikov, and you've got Belusky. Now, belusky has been playing mostly in the minors the past few years. More than likely won't make this roster at a training camp. Probably going to end up in the minors again, so they could get a little bit of relief by burying that contract in the minors. That will certainly help uh, as well. Um, and now, thankfully, they'll have the Belusky contract off the books here after the coming season. And they also have some not very favorable contracts on the blue line, like Kevin Shattenkirk, like uh, Brendan Smith. Even Mark Stahl is not really earning the $5.7 million he's making nowadays. Uh, he's certainly, you know, getting up there a little bit. He's not quite the defenseman he used to be. But uh, between the three defensemen, I would think Shattenkirk and Smith would be more likely to go where Mark Stahl has a full no move where they have some modified no trade clauses in their contracts. So obviously makes things a little bit easier here, but if they can move one of those bad defense contracts or possibly look at taking one of these forwards who they don't expect to be with the club beyond this year and moving them out, that likely will be their most likely move. Now, Nemestikov, I'm not sure he's really got a ton of value. I was a little bit surprised in a way when they made the big trade with Tampa for McDonough that he was included going back. I really think at that point, Tampa uh, was actually playing him higher in the lineup to kind of boost his numbers, to kind of create some value to plan on shipping him out. I really do think that's what they were doing longer term because if you take a look at his stats beyond that season, further back and since he's been in New York, there's certainly been, uh, you know, not nearly as good. I mean, he ended up having a 20-goal season, 44-point campaign in Tampa uh, before the trade, and really things have not gone well ever since. But he did get a chance to play a lot that season with guys like uh, Stamkos and Kucherov, and at one point was kind of racking up a lot of points, uh, being the benefactor of their strong play. So I don't really know that he's got a ton of value, but I know he's probably a player they'd like to move. At the same time, uh, there's a lot of question marks around Crowder. Do they extend him or do they trade him? And they need to decide that here sooner than later. Uh, obviously, they're in a predicament now with the cap space that they very well might decide that they have to treat them because adding another big contract into the mix here uh, is certainly not going to make things any easier to manage. 
And like I said, the Matt Belusky contract likely gets buried in the minors. I think Jesper Fast probably sticks around. Hard to say exactly. They may kind of take a wait-and-see approach with him. Not really clear what their longer-term plans are around that player. But still, at the end of the day here, the Rangers uh, are in more of a necessity than Montreal is to make moves just because they are over the cap and have to become cap compliant. And they're not done signing their contracts. At least in Montreal's case, they don't have any other RFAs to look after. All their players are signed. They do have some space. They could decide to hold off go into training camp and maybe put out one or two players through waivers at that point or maybe make a trade depending on how things are going during the preseason. That is certainly a possibility. Montreal's not quite uh, in an urgent manner here that the Rangers are. Uh, so we'll see what moves the Rangers make. Uh, obviously, after seeing the James Neal, Milan Lucci trade, I think it's fair to say that a lot of these bad contracts can be traded if the right deal can be found. And even that's the second trade we've also seen this offseason amongst division and provincial rivals amongst the Canadian teams. Uh, Edmonton to Calgary. Of course, we saw Toronto and Ottawa make a trade earlier. So I don't really think when it comes to some of these deals that some of these teams are a little bit more open to trading with their rivals more than they used to be. So I guess we'll see what the Rangers do. But if you're Jeff Gordon and the Rangers crew here, what players do you decide to move out to free up some much needed salary cap space? And how do you finish assembling this roster heading into training camp? So of course, as always, want to know your thoughts and opinions down in the comment section. So let me know what you think and we'll continue the conversation. If you're new to the channel, consider subscribing and turning on your notifications so you don't miss any future content and give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. I'd appreciate it if you did. As always, thank you for watching and I will catch you next time.